Here we're given f of x equals the quantity x squared minus four x times e to the x on the closed interval from zero to four. We want to find f of zero and f of four, and if Rolle's theorem applies, we want to find a value of c such that f prime of c equals zero. So for a quick review of Rolle's theorem, if we have a function that's continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, where f of a equals f of b, then there's at least one number c in the open interval such that f prime of c equals zero, which means if our function is continuous and differentiable on the interval from a to b, where f of a equals f of b, as we see pictured here, then there's at least one value of c seen here where the derivative would equal zero, meaning at this point we have a horizontal tangent line. So going back to our example, if we begin by looking at our function over this closed interval, it would look like this. Notice how f of zero and f of four both equal zero. The function is continuous and differentiable, and therefore by Rolle's theorem, there's a value of c where f prime of c equals zero, which looks like it would be here, because at this point on the function, Notice how the tangent line would be a horizontal line, which means the slope is zero, and therefore the first derivative at this value of c would be zero. So going back to our example, let's begin by verifying algebraically that f of zero equals f of four. So f of zero would be equal to, we'd have zero squared minus four times zero, times e to the zero. Well here we'd have the quantity zero minus zero, which of course is zero, times e to the zero, which is one, which is zero. And then for f of four, we'd have the quantity four squared minus four times four, times e to the fourth. Here we have the quantity sixteen minus sixteen, which is zero, times e to the fourth, which is also zero. So now we verify that f of zero equals f of four. As we saw from the graph, the function is continuous and differentiable, and therefore Rolle's theorem does apply, and we can find our value of c, where f prime of c equals zero. To find this value of c, we'll find the first derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. So to find the first derivative though, notice how we'll have to apply the product rule given here below for review, where the first function will be x squared minus four x, and the second function would be e to the x. So we'd have the first function, x squared minus four x, times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, plus the second function, which is e to the x, times the derivative of x squared minus four x, which would be two x minus four. We want to determine for which values of x this first derivative is equal to zero, just remember our value of c must be in the open interval from zero to four. So to solve this, notice how these two products have a common factor of e to the x. So let's factor that out. So we'd have e to the x, and then we're left with, from this product, x squared minus four x. And then from this product we'd have plus two x minus four. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. We have e to the x times the quantity x squared, and then minus two x minus four equals zero. So this product equals zero when e to the x equals zero, or when x squared minus two x minus four equals zero. Well, e to the x never equals zero, so this equation has no solutions. So now we need to solve this quadratic, which is not factorable, so we'll have to apply the quadratic formula given here below, where a is equal to one, b is equal to negative two, and c is equal to negative four. Let's go ahead and solve this on the next slide. We would have x equals negative b, or negative negative two, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative two squared, minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is negative four, all divided by 
two times a or two times one. So here we have positive two plus or minus the square root of, this would be four plus sixteen or twenty divided by two and the square root of twenty simplifies to two square root of five because the square root of four is two. So we have two plus or minus two square root of five divided by two. To simplify this, let's write this as two fractions. We have two over two plus or minus two square root of five over two, which gives us one plus or minus square root of five. But remember our value of c must be in the open interval from zero to four, and one minus square root of five would be negative, not in the interval. So the value of c we're looking for would be one plus square root of five, but let's also get our decimal approximation. One plus square root of five is approximately 3.236. This is the value of c we're looking for because f prime of one plus square root of five is equal to zero, and this value is in the open interval from zero to four. So if I go back to our graph, this is the x value here, or our value of c, where the derivative equals zero, or where we have a horizontal tangent line to the function at that x value. So again, our answer is c equals one plus square root five. We shouldn't round unless the directions tell us to. I hope you found this helpful.